Yo, what is up, New York Yankees fans? Yet again, it is Felix from NYNews.com. Like always, all the stars. Slap a like on this video. Let's get the numbers up. Moving along, let's go back to the good old days talking about free agents. We haven't done that for quite some time on this channel. But since the Yankees have disgruntled fans out there, I have a feeling they're going to have a busy offseason. For people that have been on this channel for quite some time now, and for the newcomers, you guys know that I am a fan, or have always been a fan, of Carlos Correa. Even when it was unpopular. Hey Yankees fans, what are we going to do? We're going to say the Astros are cheaters still? We're going to um, make excuses for this ball club? I'm not saying that they didn't cheat. I am saying that the past is the past, and look at that. Yet again, the Astros are one game from reaching the World Series yet again under a different manager and after all that stuff that went down. So let's not make excuses of why the Yankees aren't going to the World Series, etc. We know what the problem is. So with that being said, there's an abundance of shortstops coming into free agency. There were many reports out there that came out that the Yankees wanted to trade for shortstop. Because then again, because we all know the Yankees front office is living in La La Land. They waited until mid-September or somewhere around that area to move Glaber Torres back to second base when everybody and their mother was screaming out, this guy is not a shortstop. Move him to his, I want to say natural position, but move him back to second base where he had success. So, long story put short, the Yankees tried to trade for Simmons. They even contacted the Cubs for Baez. Here's a list of shortstops that are going to hit the free agent market. And I'm going to go off of what they made in 2021. The first one on that list is Marcus Simeon, who is versatile, can play many positions. Who is a ball player's ball player? This guy looks like a baseball player. But I do believe he's going to end up a Blue Jay again. Uh, why not? The Blue Jays are surging in the AL East. They have a great future, and why not bring him back? But I'm going to be honest with you guys. I can see him as an excellent option for the New York Yankees. Now going second to the list, Trevor Story, who is a fan favorite amongst Yankees fans. Uh, he'll be turning about... What is he? He's about 29 or, or he's going to turn 30. I think he's 28 now. He's going to turn 29. He's another one that I'm not going to hate on. I'm not going to be biased here. I honestly believe whatever shortstop the Yankees obtain via free agency, keyword free agency, they're going to be legit. But if the Yankees go out there and let's say make a trade for a poor man's version of let's say like a D.D. Gregorius type, I'm not trying to bash him. I'm just saying if they hit the uh, trade market, then, you know, talking about you're going shopping for a shortstop, uh, nobody believes you. You got to go out there and make a big impact. And like I said, uh, not going to hate on Trevor Story. If you guys uh, sign him, whatever, I'm not going to complain. Story is another ball player's ball player. Looks like a baseball player. Has the nitty gritty attitude. I think he'll fit perfect on this team, especially with his uh, pal uh, DJ LeMahieu currently being on this roster. And before I get comments, because I've gotten comments like this before, when people say, what do you mean he looks like a baseball player? I mean, if you play the game, if you have played the game of baseball, uh, if you have grown up you know, ba playing baseball, you could tell there are certain kinds of players that really look like baseball players. It it's something that I can't explain, but... If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So moving along on the list. Now to another fan favorite, Corey Seager, a left-handed bat. If you want a player that already has experience similar to what they're going to encounter in the Yankees organization, Corey Seager is that guy. I can make another video talking about how defensively each shortstop might have the upper hand. On the other, but it'll just take another video. I, I know you guys are educated. This is why I don't include massive details like that. I use common sense. We all know Yankees fans are one of the smartest fan bases out there in professional sports. Just put it like that. So, Corey Seager, I mean, he's the full package. If you want me to be honest with you guys, this guy's a left-handed bat. 
plays great defensively is going to come from if he doesn't stay with the Dodgers, a organization like the Dodgers that are contending for a, you know, they want to win it like the Yankees ideology was when uh, George Steinbrenner was in charge. He's going to come from an organization like that. So moving along, let's talk about Carlos Correa, who has huge numbers historically when playing in the playoffs. Those are the kinds of numbers that I like to look at. You see, I mentioned three great shortstops already. All of those guys are great. But the one difference that Carlos Correa has from all of them is this guy is the show. This guy brings personality. And I'm not talking about like a ha heavy bias type that always has an attitude and is always angry. I'm talking about a guy that likes the cameras on him and he doesn't budge. He actually performs. When the pressure is on him, he's clutch. We need that type of player on the New York Yankees. We need a guy that can actually back up his trash talking. And look, Aaron Judge has been great. I love the guy. But we've seen many times where he opens his mouth and he doesn't back it up. Playing New York, New York, uh, this and that. And it's fine. But look, Carlos Carrera has a better track record even when he's not trash talking. He performs in October. This is the kind of shortstop if you're going to go out there and try to sign one and spend money on. That's the guy you need to throw money at. You already know what he's going to give you in the regular season. Semi all-star player. But guess what? Once October comes, the numbers don't lie. I said this tweet about two years ago. I said Carlos Correa, uh, when the Astros were kind of shopping him back in 2019, I said, hey, I know you guys uh, hate the Astros, but if Carlos Correa is available, I would love him on the New York Yankees. And you know, Yankees fans with the whole Astros cheating scandal and whatever, they, they said he's a cheater, he sucks. But um, let's, let's use common sense here. Carlos Correa has been one of the top elite shortstops in Major League Baseball for quite some time now. You know, you could compare him or whatever. He's probably not top five or, or something like that. But he, he could be in that discussion. I'll say he's in that discussion. Uh, let's, let's go back to the uh, numbers he has during uh, October. He's definitely up there. He's number one, if you ask me. Current shortstops. With Aaron Boone being the manager of the New York Yankees, we all know the guy is soft. We need that type of personality on the New York Yankees. We need a Carlos Correa. Even if they tr trash talking back, he's laughing, saying it's great. We need that kind of personality. He would fit great in New York City. And let's not forget to mention the man grew up a New York Yankees fan. Every kid growing up in Puerto Rico is basically a New York Yankee fan or a Pittsburgh Pirate fan with the history of uh, the great Roberto Clemente. But realistically, the majority of Puerto Ricans in Puerto Rico are Yankees fans. And we could back that up. Uh, Carlos Correa's uh, old videos, he came out and said he was a huge Yankees fan. And recently, a uh, radio personality out there in Puerto Rico asked him, he basically said something like this, what does he think about signing with a team from New York? Carlos Correa laughed and said he, he would love it. And preferably, he would love wearing pinstripes. So we already know, the Yankees go after and try to sign Carlos. It's a uh, given. The guy's there for the taking. But um, something that might work to teams' advantages this offseason, industry insiders have said that uh, the New York Mets overpaid Lindor and to not expect those kinds of big contracts for um, shortstops this offseason. I don't know if it's true or not, but I could see that. Is Carlos Correa going against a Francisco Lindor a Fernando Tatis Jr. type of contract. Who knows? But if you guys want him as your shortstop, the Yankees are obviously going to have to pay the man. And they're obviously going to have to pay whatever shortstop they obtain via free agency. And hey, if they are the cheap Yankees, they're going to settle for a Simmons type uh, of a shortstop or a, uh, what, what is this guy's name again? Uh, Freddie something? Um... Galvis, a shortstop like that. 
And we all know it will be uh, settling for less. Go out there, the free agent class for shortstops hasn't been that greater. You even have Javi Baez out there, etc. But I, I want to prefer Javi Baez over Correa. Uh, the, these are two different kinds of ball players, And when I say that, I mean mentality-wise. But then again, I'm not saying he wouldn't be great. That's another sh- great shortstop, and there's word that the Mets are trying to, to extend him or whatever. I don't think that's going to happen. I think he's going to uh, go out there in the free agent market. And, and, and again, he's not a bad shortstop. I'll even take him if the Yankees go after him as well. But by now, you guys know my favorite is Carlos Correa. If I missed some names, include them in the comment section below. So moving along, I think the Yankees should trade Glaber Torres. I think that moving uh, DJ LeMahieu permanently to first base or shifting him from third base to first base is not the right decision. I think DJ naturally, obviously he's had more experience at second base. He performs better at second base. And the Yankees have a dilemma here when it comes to Glaber Torres. And I do believe that the Yankees could shop and include in a package, include Glaber Torres in a package for, let's say, a another Yankees fan favorite, uh, Matt Olson of the Oakland A's. You solve many problems. Obviously, you go out there and sign a shortstop. You put DJ LeMahieu at his favorite position, his natural position. And you get a first baseman like Matt Olson, an all-star. Look, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it's the most common sense thing to do. And the another common sense thing to do is to um, let go of uh, Gary Sanchez, train him away as well. So the Yankees need to do a lot to, um, because we all know, you know, bringing back Aaron Boone, we're, we're not going to win a championship if it's just uh, Aaron Boone. Uh, you know, managing this team. We we need players to get hot. The only way I could see the Yankees winning the World Series or even reaching a World Series or even going far deep down into the playoffs is if a player stays hot or has a career year. Similar to how DJ LeMahieu was carrying this organization for about uh, two seasons. That's the only way I could see Aaron Boone actually winning a world championship with the New York Yankees. We need guys to stay hot. And we need these guys to perform when it counts. So, Yankees fans, like always, leave your opinions in the comment section below. Which sort stop would you like the Yankees to go after? Leave your opinions in the comment section below. And like always, this has been Felix from nynews.com. Share, like, and subscribe. And I will check you out next time.